Hello, uh, we are here on day two of Retail Week Live, uh, and I'm delighted to be joined by Lord Stuart Rose, Chairman of Ocado, uh, former Chief Executive and Executive Chairman of Marks and Spencer. Um, thanks, Stuart, for your time. George, um, hi, good morning. We're living through very turbulent times, both uh, because of the way in which retail is changing and in the political environment post Brexit or post the vote to leave the EU. Um, what's your reading of how retail is likely to play out over the next year or so? Well, we've never lived in smooth times. I mean, we, mm. we may have dreamt about smooth times. So retail is always a bit choppy. But I think you're right. We're you know we're not quite sure where we're heading. Number one, mm. number two, it looks a bit stormy, and number three, we've got to be prepared. Um, I think that we've got a number of things which are different to what we've had in the past. As mm. I said, you know, if you normally have the difficulties of comp competition and the ups and downs of, uh, of the economy. You've now got this whole issue still going on about channel shift and disintermediation. Yeah, yeah. You've got the big, big issue of the unknown, which is the first time in a half century of Brexit. Mm. And you've got um, one other thing, which is the legacy slightly of all the uh, expansion that was done in the early part of the millennium, mm. which is impacted now by those other two things and therefore means that many retailers will be looking at their bricks and mortar and saying, blimey, how do I deal with this mess? Yeah, you think there's overcapacity in the retail market? I, I not only think there is overcapacity, I mean, I think there is. I mean, yes, I don't believe it's true. I think it is true. Mm. Uh, and I think that's the case. I mean, it was interesting enough that you know, there was overcapacity in electronics, but the sort of car phones, Dixons thing, mm. Sammy dealt with it. Right, yeah. I think the food thing is uh, indicative that people are doing something in terms of Booker and Tesco and others may follow. Uh, and then, you know, maybe there'll even be some consolidation in clothing, which is intensely competitive and, and overpopulated. Yeah. Um, and if you're a retailer or a chief executive or a leader of any business, you've got to remember that the world is changing, scale matters. And if you're just in that middle land or in the, in the micro land, mm. you're not able to dictate terms to anybody you just go where the currents take you yeah I mean you've spent your whole career in retail so you've lived through various uh, difficult times in the past what would your uh, one big bit of advice be to retailers today about how to successfully navigate through any turbulence well I just say it would be absolutely on the button in terms of what's going on mm. keep yourself really informed have every sort of antennae primed mm. number one number two as I tried to say, I think earlier on in the in the conference, uh, you know, if you believe there's anything like the beginning of a trend, there is the beginning of a trend. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for the trend to become a wave because you'll get done in the tsunami. You know, really try and ride the wave ahead of the curve so that you're going to be one of the winners and not lose. And if you if you don't get that, or you haven't got those antennae, or you just don't want to know about it, you are going to be a loser. Mm. I mean, one of the most difficult things at the moment, you've uh, put your finger on there, there's so many uh, trends to try and keep abreast of now, and uh, you think of the way in which consumer behaviour is changing, you know, how do you really identify which is the one to back? Well, you've got, it's a bit like, I mean, it's bad advice, or it's sort of thing, it's counterintuitive, it's a bit like me as I used to say, that you can't back every horse in a, in, in, in a race meeting and come out mm. as a winner. Mm. At the moment, though, you've got to sort of follow them all the way down until you know who might be the winner because mm. you can't afford to have picked the wrong horse. Mm. And, you know, um, I think I used this phrase first time, and I still use it, on a Retail Week conference, and that is that I was brought up to believe that the customer is uh, is king mm. but the customer isn't king the customer is master of the universe <laughs> you know they have everything to their advantage and mm. you know, if we're going to be successful we've got to serve them well uh, and make sure we do it better than our competitor yeah and um finally uh, Stuart, um we were talking earlier about Brexit and the extent to which uh, retailers and businesses um, need to speak up and make their voices heard in some of the big debates that affect the country uh, and the world. Um, you don't think they're um, making their voices heard sufficiently, do you, I don't think? Well, I just think that, you know, it, this is a big industry. Mm. I mean, industry is hugely important in the UK, but the retail industry is the biggest is the biggest employer. Yeah, three right? million people. We are a consumer-driven society. Mm. Things are about to happen, or things did happen last year, and more things are about to happen this year, mm. which are going to mm. directly affect not only our customers but our businesses, our employees, and yeah. our futures. And you know, I hear a lot of there's a, there's a very noisy silence. Mm -hmm. I don't hear much. 
No. So they need to speak up more? Well, or shut up. Right. Yeah. If you don't like, in the future, something that happens. Because mm. if you had the opportunity to say something and you didn't, you've only got yourself to blame. OK. And uh, last question. You were asked um, about uh, whether uh, Sir Philip should lose his knighthood uh, in the session. Um, share with everybody uh, your answer. Well, my answer is quite simple. Uh, Philip, Philip, I'm sure, will be the first to admit that the deal he did was not a clever one. He's tried to redress what he's done. He's paid a substantial sum of money in, in, into the tank to ensure that people have a better deal than they would have got if they'd gone into the Pension Protection Fund. And at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm sure that um, he was going to try and salvage his reputation further. But in the meantime, you know, I don't really like the idea of a village green lynch mob coming mm. along and just sort of saying, well, we're just going to beat you up publicly and humiliate you. I don't do humiliation. OK, thank you very much.